Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's flute tip is on how to double tongue on the flute. Okay, I've done videos on problems with double tonguing and how to do it better and how to do it faster and how not to rush, but I want to go back to the basics today and talk about how do you exactly double tongue to achieve maximum effect. And um, I have come across some issues with students um, when I've taught them how to double tongue and it all goes back to where they place their ta. So this is the basics of double tonguing. There are many teachers out there that will give you different syllables to use um, and, and place the tongue between the lips or things like that and they're not wrong. I'm going to just give you the very basics of how to do a regular double tonguing. And then later on for effect and for tone color and for the ideas you want to express in your solos, you can change that double tonguing once you hear how it can be. And then you'll know how to uh, achieve that same effect with maybe a dugu dugu or a turu turu or paka paka between the lips because I've seen that done before and it's been good. This is how I learned and it's done me very well. So I'm going to teach you this way. Okay. It all goes back to the basics of where do you place your ta. Now, when I've taught students from different cultures, even from my own culture, even from the United States, uh, depending on where in the country they were raised, sometimes the ta, when you say a ta sound, it's put in a different spot in your mouth. And um, once I've discovered that, then I was able to help students better achieve the how to double tongue and how to single tongue properly. So when you single or when you uh, put the ta for the tucka tucka, and I use the syllables tucka tucka, so I would write it just a T and a K and a T and a K, and I would do the same with triple tonguing. Uh, I put the ta as far forward in my mouth as I can get without being on the teeth. Now it's uh, in the root, if you feel the roof of your mouth and you go uh, in between your two front teeth, but the roof of your mouth, there's this little bump. And I know that linguists out there have an actual name for that little bump and I don't know what it is, but there's that little bump up there. That is the right place to put your ta. Now, when people have problems with their double tonguing, almost, almost 100% of the time, almost, the ta is too far back. So if you take your tongue and you go from that little bump, right almost in between your two front teeth, but still on the roof of the mouth, and you travel backward, you find a ridge before it arches up to you and then gets to your soft palate in the back. Most of the time, issues with double tonguing are because that ta is somewhere between the bump and the ridge. The ta is back here, ta, ta. Now you can hear the difference when I say ta or when I'm on, the, and that's part way back, or when I'm on the knob, ta. So ta and ta. I'm saying them exactly the same way, trying to anyway. It's just a placement of the tongue. When the tongue is too far back, and then you put your tucka, 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 tucka. It puts your ka in a really weird place on the roof of your mouth. Um, when I, and that is exactly how I used to double tongue. And in high school and playing Mozart concerto or a Bach piece, the, one of the fat allegros, the fast movements, and doing a lot of practice with double tonguing, the roof of my mouth would just, I wouldn't really call it sore but it would feel like I needed a massage. I wanted to just go back there, have something, just, just rub it, get the, get back to normal. And I think it's all because the ka is hitting in the wrong spot because once I learned to do it properly, there was no, I could double tongue all day long and never ever have an issue. So if I put the ta on the knob and I don't move my tongue, ta, so the front of my tongue hits the knob on the ta, then the middle of my tongue, ka, stays right there. Ta, ka, ta, ka. If I move back, sometimes the, it does this, ta, ka, ta, ka. The tongue has to move back and forth or even just ta, 
ka in its way in the back of the mouth. Bringing it forward, tucka 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 and how you want to start is to say it, tucka tucka ta. You want to do it in fives, tucka tucka ta. If it's easy when you say it, it'll be easy when you play it. So you're saying, tucka tucka ta, tucka tucka ta. It's easy. You're not putting any pressure. You're not tucka tucka ta. I have many people that put this really hen pecky sound, and the tongue, the sound is chopped off. Tucka tucka ta. Uh, and I'll demonstrate it on the flute too, but it's because the air isn't going through. You're not keeping that steady air pressure. Tucka tucka ta. Even though there's steady air pressure through there, it's not chopping the ta in the ka. It's not chopping those. So on my F, I'm going to do that five. Tucka tucka ta. Tucka tucka ta. Now, if you do that and it comes out tucka tucka ta, that's fine. Let it be no sound or some weird sound. The main focus is that you keep this tucka tucka ta, put it on the flute. It's the same thing. Don't let it change. When I have a student working on this right now, and as they are beginning it, they say tucka tucka ta. All well and good, it's fine, and they do this. It just does this weird kind of choppy, henpecky thing. Tucka tucka ta. Put it on and gently. Now, if you can't achieve that, if you can't get it to go, probably you're ch chopping the air off, so the air's not going. Tucka tucka ta. Tucka tucka ta. I'm pushing the air through. But I'm not doing it in gallons of air. It's just steady. So I'm breathing from here. I have a tight um, stomach muscles and rib cage. So I'm creating that pressure so that my tongue is free. There's air pressure there, but my tongue is free to be light. Tight. Got to let the air out because I'm holding so much air in. The more you hold in, the better and easier it's going to be. Now, once I do that, then I can go up five notes. So I'll say tucka tucka ta. Tucka tucka ta. Now I'm going to try a nine. Tucka 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 ta. Tucka 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 ta. So two groups of four with an ending one. Now it's okay if your tongue and your fingers get away from each other. Just slow it up a little bit. Tucka 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 ta. I'm doing it very easy. I'm not trying to get the best tone in the world. Uh, it's just very easy. Now I'm going to move to the G. I'm going to keep it in the key of F, so there's a B flat. Tucka tucka ta. Tucka 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 ta. Just nice and easy. Whatever is the tone that comes out. The tongue on the knob. Now, if you come away and you say, I hear this clunky sound, tucka tucka ta, and that's how I always, always, always know someone is tonguing incorrectly, single tonguing or double tonguing, because I hear a thunk noise. And um, once you start hearing the thunk noise, both for the teacher and the student, it will drive you absolutely crazy and you'll want to fix it. Most of the time, the kids that have come to me that have that thunking tongue noise, they have no idea that they're doing it. They don't hear it. Um, they might 
feel something on the roof of their mouth, but they don't really recognize that. Uh, once they start doing it, then they fix the tonguing. But until you actually hear that noise your tongue makes uh, when it's in the wrong spot, it's a lot harder to fix. You just have to go by my word that, yes, if I were standing next to you and you're tonguing in the wrong spot, I probably can hear it. So I can't get in there. I can't see. There's no cross section in a hollow that I can see where your tongue is hitting and what's going on. I just have to do it by what I hear. Uh, and that is, if you're feeling that tiredness on the roof of your mouth, it's always because the tongue is hitting, the top of the tongue is hitting too far back. So if I try that, I'm, I, you won't be able to hear it, but... Um, I mean, you can hear that that's not a very good double tonguing. So I'm, I, all I did, I tried to do everything the same, same air pressure, same air flow, but I moved the tongue back and it obviously didn't sound the same. So I have here, what I started with is the Telemann Suite in A minor. And here's how I would apply it to a piece of music. So if I've started to uh, learn double tonguing and I've done the scale, so I would use that F scale, go to A, a, B flat, C, D, E, E, D, C, B flat, A, and continue and use any scale, do any combination, keep it in fives and nines, feel like you're getting it, your fingers are staying with your tongue, you can get it a little bit faster or a little bit faster, then go to your piece of music. So this is just the overture in the uh, suite, Telemann suite in A minor, and it starts off with nice double tonguing. Okay, so you're doing that, or you say you're working on a Mozart concerto, or you're working on a Bach Allegro. Uh, here's how I would work on it. So this starts, this is in 6-8. Um, starts off with two eighth notes, and I don't really care about those because I'm only caring about double tonguing. Then it's a... D, C, B, A, B. Uh, I'm going to tongue the D since it begins my group of four. And then the next group. Now, can I put it together? If I can put it together, then I can start putting groups together. Now, since this is in 6-8, my groups of 4 and 9 aren't going to work. What is going to work is if I practice in groups of 6. Taka, 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 ta. Taka, 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 ta. Wait. Taka, 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 ta. Taka, 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 ta. Taka, 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 ta. Um, and you can arrange that as best you can. Taka, taka, ta. Taka, 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 ta. Taka, 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 ta. Taka, 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 ta. And then I will put that into... Here's um, part of it. Now I'm playing this group of six plus one, so sevens, uh, the same way, the same airflow, the same lightness. I don't care about the best tone until I really understand how to make my tonguing light and easy tone is not the most important thing and it'll come when you figure out how to do your tonguing how to get your fingers and your tongue to go together then uh, tone comes next and and that will be easy for you to get so don't even worry about that make sure that the air and the air pressure are all going through your tongue and that it's not chopping there's no hen peck sound that is the most usual problem that I see from my students is that it's very choppy, very choppy sound. All right, so the basics for double tonguing is tongue forward, tongue on that little knob right between your two front teeth, but on the roof of your mouth and keep it there. Make your tongue be pointed, tuck -tuck -ta, tuck -tuck -ta. and then keep your air pressure through uh, the tonguing, keep it steady, Blow the air, but not, you're not overblowing. I'm not, ta 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 
I'm holding that air in, but there's a lot of air pressure so my tongue can stay light. If your tongue isn't staying light, you probably don't have enough air pressure. You're probably trying to push too much air as if you're blowing harder through your tongue. Practice that, try it. You'll see you can get a much easier double tonguing and then you could double tongue all day and all night if you wish uh, without having any issues, without saying I'm, my tonguing is tired. It, I mean, of course I'm exaggerating, but your tonguing, my tongue just never gets tired uh, from doing that. Whereas it did when I tongue too far back. Try it. You're going to find that this is the best way to double tongue. Let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those uh, because the little issues come up or you have questions as you try it out yourself. So enjoy learning how to double tongue properly. That's today's flute tip. If you like this video, press the like button, comment below, subscribe, and share it with your friends.